Alright, hello there. Looking for mercenaries, European infantry, 1450 to 1500 from Perry Miniatures. You came to the right place. So these are from Perry. Uh, they are the last box of the boxes we've done for the Wall of the Roses. Are we doing? Yep. Yep. And they're really a mixture of... Well, we'll have a look at the sprues and talk about it, actually. Um, some nice little outfits on the back. Not really a huge amount of use to us, but there's a very good guide on how to put them together, which is very nice. Right, so we'll pop them open and we'll have a look. Oh, well, you get these bases with them, which are useless to us, but uh, we always keep the bases. Should we do the command sprue first or the... Yeah, let's do the command sprue. Right. Tell you what, no, we'll do the infantry sprue first thinking about it right so here is the infantry sprue and the figures are the same figures you get for the bowman you know the bowman we did yeah exactly the same figures no problem whatsoever they're just perfectly normal sort of standing figures dressed to the period but the interesting thing is you get crossbows four per sprue is it four or five five per sprue um, you get I think four muskets as well. These are the muskets. Uh, well, arquebuses or muskets, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're muskets, basically. They're basically fire, lo uh, fire locks. Yeah, they're fire ones. They actually yeah. for 10 years. Um, and then you get pikes. Now, the interesting thing about the pikes is obviously the, we didn't use pikes in England, um, but we did use halberds which are much more useful than a pike. And so if you're using them as Europeans, then you're going to be using them as pikes. But I will quickly go on to the next thing, which is the sprue. Uh, this sprue, you get two of these per box. These, so you can equip a whole unit with them. And you get halberd heads there. And you just get the pike and you cut, the, cut it off about there. About a third of the pike and then you stick the halberd on and you have yourself halberd ears. Um, right so this is the command sprue but it also has the useful bits on it. You have a few swords which you can put on your troops. Not all these sort of troops would carry swords. Um, these, these are the sort of troops where if the main weapon fails they run away. Um, and then swords are useless anyway. So, um, but, but you know they did carry swords. It was just an arming sword nothing else. Um, you have an officer in resplendent shiny armour. He's probably the only guy getting paid properly. Um, and then you get a um, d d d uh, guy carrying the flag. But you can also a use flag this bearer. flag bearer. But you can also use this as an officer as well. If you look on the box, he's actually the officer. I think he's one of the officers on the box. Um, but it's entirely up to you what you do and you've got a very large selection of heads to choose from as to what you want to do. All these heads will do pretty much for everywhere. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty much basic helmets of the period. And there's certainly no uniformity in headgear. Um, and that is a very interesting bit uh, because you can have the officer going forward with his sword pointing towards the enemy. Which is quite cool. It's quite nice. Uh, then we also have these, which are pervasors. Perv um, we've got one set of pervasors that you can stick in the ground and one set you can put on the back. Or just have standing in front. It's entirely up to you. Um, so, to, cut a, to make it easier, um, I have a few figures here. Um, this is a crossbowman unit. Um, the figures here are actually, th those arms are from the Bowman box. Um, this is a Lancastrian bow unit, uh, sorry, crossbow unit with the windlass crossbow. Not a very useful crossbow, um, but best technology you can come up with at the time. And to illustrate the pointy sticks, uh, these guys are... Norfolk? It's no, no, so oh, yes, Oxford, cool. Oxford, sorry, brain hurt. These are Oxford's troops, and these uh, these guys at the back are the pikemen, and I've cut the pike down and stuck a halberd on it. So that's what they are. And there's two guys having a quick drink while the officer's not noticing, 
uh, hiding mm. around the back of the tree having a drink and talking about how the battle's going and the officer's there and that guy that guy's a swap that guy uh, and the reason they're based like this is it's for impetus and um, the some crossbow units would have halberds attached to them um, basically because crossbowmen on their own are dead that you just run over them and kill them and so they were given halberds so they could form a hedgehog in defense against cavalry um, but against infantry they're just not you know you're not going to do no. well but it, it just made the unit slightly heavier uh, slightly more survivable on the battlefield and these guys are muskets or archibi archibusts um what's multi archibusts what's the multiple of archibust not a clue no um You've got a guy there reloading, some guys shooting, and they're hiding behind a little wall. This is a skirmish base, just a light skirmish base, um, nicely done up. And that's the figures you get, and that's what you can do with them. So what do you think? Pretty good sprues, aren't they? A lot like the... Um, I think these ones resemble the Teutonic ones, sprues, a lot. Thinking about it, um, yeah, they get pretty much the same equipment, don't they? Yeah. The Teutons get... Especially when you mentioned the crossbows. So you get the five crossbows now as well. Yeah, the Teutons from Fireforge that we do, um, they've got uh, a mixture of crossbows, swords, close combat weapons and stuff. So, yeah, it's not bad, not bad. Um, these guys aren't technically close combat troops at all. No. They are shoot and run away type troops. Um, they're not... You put them on your flanks, or you send them in the middle just to wear the enemy down. You don't try and fight. Um, the pikes are there. The pikes, you're not going to try to use pikemen in combat now in this period of history. A pike's going to do nothing to knights or men, men at arms. Um, you're not going to. You're just pointless. Um, if you're going to take on men at arms, you need a halberd. Because mm. at least then you have a pointy bit. You can try and get through the enemy's armor on. A pike's not going to do anything to a knight. Nothing at all. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's great. So this, I'd say the pikes are for the Europeans, but obviously if you're going to make them English, then you're going to make them halberds. So that's everything. So oh, what do you oh, think? Good sprues. Yeah, it's an interesting little um, addition. Yeah, it's, this is, it's not really an army. It's not. It's just an add-on. Yeah. Because they're like, already good army from their, their, bo uh, their boxes. The bowmen are bowmen. Um, that nice bowmen box. You do get a few halberds in that. Um, the what's his names um, the cavalry are cavalry the light horse are light horse but these are kind of a mixture and you can really do what you want with them and given that you get three sprues then you can actually equip three units one unit with crossbow one unit with pike and one unit with musket or you well, whatever you want to do with them really um, but we tend to delve into our bits box a lot to make them into different things. Yeah, um, these guys are currently supplementing our Shire troops, um, the Shire Bowman, Shire Pike, uh, sorry, Halberds, uh, Billman, um, just to flesh out the um, armies. So that's it. So any comments? No, that's it. That's it. Right. So short video this one. Yeah. Um, like it is, it's just an addition incident to the rest of the army. Yeah, yeah. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of the mercenaries. That's everything from me. And everything from him. Goodbye. See ya.